Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Fairy Forest and I'm sipping on some mint tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright so for my materials today I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me you can certainly switch up the size but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, purple violet, green oxide, deep yellow, burnt sienna which I like to call rust, burnt umber which I will most likely call brown, Mars black, and cobalt blue. And of course you can switch up those colors but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today I have three brushes from my personal brush line which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush and I have a number one round synthetic brush and I will refer to these as small medium and large as we go through the painting process and of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes and down below this video in the video description I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting our background. I'm going to be using my large brush. The colors that I'm going to use are green, blue, white, purple, and brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two custom colors. I'm going to have a light greenish color that I'll be using at the top. I'm going to have a light purple or a lavender color that it's going to fade into. And then I'm going to use brown down at the bottom as an additional fade in my background gradient of sorts. I'm going to use my large brush to paint, but I'm going to use my medium brush in order to mix my colors so you can see where my custom colors are, are going to be. I have pre-mixed the two custom colors that I'm going to be doing. This is my light green that I created. How I got to that was using green, a little bit of blue. I don't need much blue, but just a little bit of blue, and then white. And then I was just I just mixed it together. So I'm going for a light, kind of like a light minty green type of a color with a little hint of blue in it. So it almost adds a, a little bit more of a luminescent value to the um, background that I'm searching for. So that's going to be the green that, I, that I'm creating. The next color is my lavender and, or the light purple. How I got to that was I used a whole bunch of purple and just a little bit of white. The white will turn it light really quickly so you don't need a lot of white in there in order to create this nice lavender type of a color. And then once you've got your two colors mixed I'm just going to put this brush away, just wipe off my excess paint on my palette and then I'm going to be using my large brush to, uh, to apply it to the canvas. So I'm picking up my light green color. I'm going to be using that at the top of my canvas. I'm going to bring this color down about a third of the way down my canvas before I start to introduce the light purple into the equation. So I'm just going to bring this down just a little bit further. Just going back and forth, make sure it's spread out well. So bringing it down again about a third of the way down my canvas. And then once I've got it down this far, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up 
about equal parts of my green and my lavender on my brush at the same time. So I have about equal parts of both of those two colors and I'm gonna blend them right on my canvas. So just kind of uh, moving them back and forth, left to right, getting it to blend in with that section above it and then just going back and forth left to right to get it to blend in. I'm gonna do the same color combination on my brush. Next next um, load is half and half, both of those two colors. And then again, I'm gonna mix them right on the canvas together. The next time I pick up paint, I'm just gonna be picking up my lavender without washing my brush. And what's gonna happen is, again, it's, it's just creating this nice gradient moving down my canvas. So right now I'm just picking up my lavender and you'll see how it begins to become the dominant color in my, in my uh, gradient at this point down my canvas. And I'm gonna bring my, my lavender all the way down to the bottom and once I've got it completely down to the bottom, I'll start adding some brown to it. The brown I'm gonna be using on top of or intermingled with my lavender in order to um, start the process of this almost looking like a, the forest floor. It'll have a nice kind of darker tinge to it. So just bringing my purple all the way down to the bottom. It doesn't have to have perfect coverage as you're coming down towards the bottom, just something to get it on there. And now I'm picking up on my dirty brush, just brown. The brown is gonna act again as a nice kind of neutralizing forest floor kind of color. And again, I'm just kind of going back, whoops, back and forth left to right to get it to blend kind of up into that lavender color. And then that's all I'm gonna be doing for this step. You could certainly do a second coat on it if you wanted to, but what I recommend doing is letting it dry and if you want to do a second coat, feel free to do so. If not, you can put your large brush away. We're going to be using our medium brush for the next step, so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint our background trees. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are my light green, my lavender, and brown. So it's going to be all the colors that we used in the first layer. I do recommend before you start the step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry or you can do as I did and just pull out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. What I'm going to be doing for these background trees is I really just want them to give depth to my forest. So I'm going to be using the colors from my background in order to create the illusion of these tree trunks and branches far in the in the depths of the forest. So I just want them to be soft and muted a little bit um, and kind of almost out of focus. I do want to be careful to not put too much in the middle in through here because I want there to be a focal point with my fairies and all the other little twinkles and stuff that are going to happen in the middle. So I'm going to concentrate my trees on the left and the right and maybe a little bit in through here. I'm going to start with a little bit of my light green and my lavender on my brush at the same time. So I have about equal parts of both of them on my brush and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving these long um, vertical type of marks and I can have them going diagonal, I can have them going straight up and down. I'm thinking of this kind of like long pieces of grass. This is gonna allow me to get the illusion of some out of focus type of tree trunks and branches off in the distance. I'm just starting with my um, green and lavender right now, just to get these light silhouetted kind of um, softer pieces in the interior so again so I don't overdo it and just crossing these colors over one another is going to help to just provide a nice out of focus type of look to those um, those back branches and stuff so that's looking pretty good and I'm now going to pick up these two colors plus brown so what I do is I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of the light green, the lavender, and brown, all three colors on my brush at the same time. And now I'm gonna start doing some more darker ones. 
This time, again, a can, you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, you can really have fun with it. The whole trick is to just not overdo it in this center area. So I'm gonna have some up in through here. Again, you can put, I just put a little bit of water on my brush in order to get these really faint ones up in the background in through here. I know that I will be using, um, we have our foreground trees that we'll be doing in a little bit that are gonna really take up a lot more of the visual effect, but this again is just providing us with some good depth in that painting, making it look like there's stuff in that background so we have um, that illusion to present to the viewer. And again, I'm just kind of bringing some up in through here. A little bit of water on my brush is allowing for these real faint type of lines to, to happen. I'm putting a couple more down at the bottom. I'm also gonna, I think, gonna bring a little bit down in through this center area as if it's the ground to the um, to the forest. So again, this is just, I have more brown on my brush at this point, but you can, I, I'm flipping back and forth between the brown, the purple, the light purple, and the green. And then I'm thinking that that's pretty good. Just maybe a couple more down in through here. We are going to be, um, again, making some foreground trees that are gonna encapsulate these edges in through here. So you don't really have to worry about um, much detail on these edges. Uh, so once you get this done, we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our foreground trees or the trees that are closest to the viewer. I'm gonna be using my medium brush the colors that I'm gonna use are burnt sienna, brown, and black. And what I'm gonna, I might use a little white too, but if I need to go into any lighter colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have two main trees on each side. I'm gonna have one that's kind of set behind the other. So I'm gonna do the one that's farther away on each side first, which are gonna be, I'm pointing here because that's about where they're going, which are gonna be right about here. And then I'll do two huge ones that are gonna just flank the edges of our canvas and kind of canopy the top. I'm gonna have a combination of the rust brown and black. So these look a little bit closer, more in focus, but also take on the shadows of, or the darkness of the forest. It'll make it look like this center area is really light and it's got some vibrancy there. So we're gonna kind of frame the painting with a nice dark border of trees. I'm gonna start with burnt sienna and brown on my brush at the same time to put these two um, further trees in first. So if this is the center of my canvas, I'm about, uh, this is halfway up, this is about quarter way down. I'm gonna go from here, I'm gonna go out to the left and the right. I would say maybe until you're almost another quarter away from the edges of the canvas. And it, it doesn't have to be perfect, just somewhere in this vicinity will work. I'm gonna do this one in through here first. I'm gonna kind of bring the, the bottom of the tree down and make it feel like it's kind of um, almost working, those roots are just working their way into the forest floor, something like this. So this right now is just burnt sienna and brown on my brush. I'm gonna and put a little bit of black in a minute, but this is just gonna kinda get me started. I'm putting a little bit more brown on my brush right now. And this tree in through here, I don't need it to really be um, too invasive. This is, these back trees are gonna, or this one is gonna have one of my little uh, fairy houses on it, but I I don't need it to be too large and take up the show too much. So that's gonna give me my head start. I'm gonna have my little branch, I would say coming out, I would say almost halfway up my canvas. This is gonna be where my little um, house is. So I'm gonna make a branch coming out in this direction, maybe a couple of little ones underneath here. And you can plan that out now, or when we go to do the details on them, you can you can do that later. So my other one is gonna be somewhere in this vicinity, and this one's gonna, I'm gonna have a little bit bigger. I'm gonna have this one almost down to the, um, to the bottom of my canvas, something like this will work out just perfect for me. Maybe a little bit in through here, maybe a little wider, yeah, that works out. And I'm going for these ones to be uh, a little bit lighter at the bottom than what I'm gonna, than totally black because I wanna be able to set them 
Um, I want to be able to see the difference between them and the tree that's going to be in front of them. But right now, again, just kind of setting it in place with my burnt sienna and brown. And in a second, I'll add a little bit of black to it. I'm not going to, this one's not going to hold one of my little houses, but the tree in front of it is. So I'm just mentally planning for that in my head. And then I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black and brown paint right now just to get a little bit of darkness in these trees. But again, I don't want it to go too, too dark. So I'm just allowing for little bits of darkness in order to um, just kind of give myself some some dimension to the trees and a little bit of texture, maybe in the bark. And then I have just a little bit more black paint on these little branches coming out. And then I'm gonna do my front trees in a second here. If I can stop, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this darkness in this back or in this tree here too. So that was just the remnants of the black on my brush with a little bit of brown. I'm gonna put a little bit more coming down in through here. And I really want this to feel like there's, you know, just all kinds of roots and stuff growing into this forest floor. So that's why I'm going across this left to right, allowing for some of these marks to just kind of travel across the the forest floor. That's gonna, when we put the, the fairies on and they're flying in the, in the air, this is gonna really help to ground the, um, the pieces in, in the landscape. And again, I'm just using black and brown. You can also use a little bit of um, liquid medium or water on your brush. That's gonna help to uh, spread the paint out a little bit further, give you these uh, cleaner lines or edges to your branches. And I really like to have um, lots of movement in my trees. So you'll notice as I go through the process, I do like to have little branches sticking out here and there, maybe some kind of looking like they're broken or coming off in a different direction. So feel free to incorporate whatever you want on those. So those are looking pretty good to me. I Now I'm going to start working on the trees that are closer to us. So this, these are gonna be really dark. I put a lot of black paint on my brush. I'm gonna uh, have this over on this side here so you can really use a lot of paint. I picked up black and brown to just get this kind of heavy paint on in through here. And then again, I'm gonna do the same thing with my roots. But this time I, I'm, I can bring this one in front of, or kind of riding right next to the base of this back tree. So it looks like it's just kind of sitting in front of it. And then I just know that I want this to all really look like roots <laughs> in the ground. So I'm got, I just picked up a little bit of burnt sienna as well. So it, I can have those rich tones in it. So on these larger trees, I'm gonna be using a combination of black, burnt sienna and brown and I most likely will alternate back and forth but I'm going to start predominantly with the black and the brown and then uh, kind of sprinkle in some of the burnt sienna when I feel that I want the richness to those tone to the um to the tones of the bark or if you feel like you have a vacant space like I don't feel like that's disc or that's connected well I can just put kind of a couple of branches coming out my bigger tree that'll help to support or hide <laughs> that background a little bit. So that helps if you've got some spaces that need some filling in. I'm gonna bring a real big branch up in through uh, here that's gonna kind of go way up to the top of my canvas. I want this tree to look really close to the viewer so I, I need to have these big stable branches or a big stable uh, trunk in, our, in order to support that thought. So even like in through here, I feel like I want this a little bit wider. So when, as you're doing stuff like this, if you want to enhance that visual effect of a tree being really close or of you know some great perspective within a, a landscape, the the contrast between the sizes of your objects will really help to sell that story. So I've got this one way bigger than the ones behind it. So that's gonna sell the, the story of perspective and it's gonna allow for the viewer to understand that this tree is probably really freaking close to the viewer um, and whatever objects I put along with this tree or in this tree can be big and they'll they'll look like they are close as well. So those are, you know, just those little tricks that if you've got them in there, they're going to help to 
make your painting even greater. So again, just black and brown is where I'm starting on this tree, making sure that I've got it kind of coming down towards the base in through here, hide, you know, making sure I've kind of covered as much area as I want in through here. I do want my um, other house to kind of my, my um, fairy house to come off of this one in a little bit lower of a spot than this one. So I just picked up a little bit more black. I just wanna make sure that I put this in the, the position that I had planned for. And I'm just gonna bring this out to about halfway into my canvas. Again, I'm planning for where I want my little, my little uh, fairy houses to go. And you can see, cause I did that one darker than the one behind it. You can now see it. I'm gonna put a little extra branch on in through here. And again, this is a really big tree. So I'm allowed to have these big kind of chunky um, branches and the um, the base to the trunk. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of burnt sienna now, I'd like a little bit of burnt sienna kind of tones in through here, allowing for this to, again, just kind of work its way into the tree. So we've got some good color variations. And now I'm just gonna go and travel up towards the top, just kind of being mindful. I don't want it to look exactly like that one. So I'm gonna just kind of give myself a little bit of an idea where I want these branches. And again, I'm just right now using uh, black and brown, and every now and again, I'm picking up a little bit of the burnt sienna to enhance some of the branches. And if they're all looking black on you, then one time just pick up brown. You don't have to always pick up that same triple combination of colors. You can if it's if it's staying too black on you or it's not giving you what you had um, wanted it to with the color combination, you just back off of one, add more of another, and then just work your way from there. And then I'm just going to give myself a couple of little skinny branches. I think I want this to kind of travel over here. And as you're going through, if you want a little bit skinnier branches, just add a little bit more moisture to your to your brush, and then you can just kind of pull out these little skinnier ones using just the tip of your brush. I like to use these little tiny skinny ones to fill in some spaces. I know that we're gonna have um, leaves and all kinds of other stuff that will help to fill out some of these spaces, but adding these little tiny um, branches that kind of sneak in between, those help to, to you know, just naturally fill it in and you don't have to worry about um, getting, you know, making sure that you have a, enough leaves and stuff like that. This just helps out. Putting just a little bit more of my burnt sienna on the couple of these branches, again, just to give them a little bit of diversity in their color. And then once you feel like you're all done, we are going to be using uh, our, we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it once you get these done. And some of these will be obviously covered with um, leaves and stuff, so you don't have to get them perfect. But once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the first step to our glow dots and our huts, our fairy houses, huts, my <laughs> fairy house huts. <laughs> I'm going to use my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are burnt sienna, white, yellow, my light green, and my lavender. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first put my huts in place with a little cute uh, base to them and a little almost a thatched kind of mushroom roof top that I'm going to put on. And then we're going to do a whole bunch of glow, glowy areas that are going to represent where the fairies and their magic are floating in the, in the air. I do again recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step so you can go through that whole drying process <laughs> or just wait for it. I'm going to do my, my huts first. I'm going to have two in through here. This is going to be my biggest one. I'm going to have a, a smaller one here and then I'm going to have a little tiny one in a back tree over here. You could really put them anywhere that you'd like. I'm just having a couple kind of in the foreground so that way the viewer can see the cuteness of the places where the fairies live and then why you can put little small ones wherever you want. I'm gonna start with a little bit of burnt sienna on my brush. I'm gonna have my first one in through here. The height of it is gonna be about here. I'm gonna make, um, I'm gonna put my roof up there but I'm gonna first start by just making myself a little bit of a shape for my for my house. So I'm just doing a horizontal line like this. And then I'm just gonna kick out the bottom 
in this kind of um, way. <laughs> kind of like the trunk of a tree, I guess. I don't know. You could make yours into whatever you want. I'm going to start with just burnt sienna to give myself this tree-like um, color. I'll be adding some extra stuff onto it later, some dimension, but this just gets me started. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other bases to the other little huts. So I'm going to have this one about this tall, so I'm going to go down just a little bit from however high I want it to be. I'm going to make myself my little horizontal line at the top and then just kind of kick it out in this. It almost kind of looks like a skirt to how it kind of kicks out at the bottom, but you can, you know, make yours whatever way that you want. I'm going to have a little tiny one up and through here. So this one, I just need to make a little burnt sienna kind of mark. I'm envisioning this to be on a tree behind this one. So just a little tiny branch in through here. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put white paint on my brush. So white paint is going to be the base for my rooftops. I'm going to start in through here and then I'm just going to kind of kick it out like like it's a little fairy skirt. <laughs> and that's just when, when I was building these houses, I'm like, what do I want to do for a rooftop? And after I was done building my fairies, I'm like, oh, I'll just put a fairy skirt on the, as the rooftop. And I thought that that was a cute idea. So that's what I'm doing for my rooftops of my fairy houses. I think that they would have fairy skirts, <laughs> or at least the fairy skirts that I envision in my little imagination. So that's going to be one. I'm going to do another one right in through here, start right here, and then just kind of kick it out to the left and to the right and just put these little kind of feathery fun edges. And if you bump into some wet burnt sienna like I just did, just roll with it. We got a little, we got other steps to go on it. And then up and through here, just kind of making almost like a little triangle for the top of that one. That's cute. I'm going to wash and dry my brush now and I'm going to put all my fairy glow dots in. So I'm going to first do the three that I know. I'm going to have three fairies in um, my scenery. So I'm going to put a glow behind each one of them so they will be very visible. I'm going to be using a little bit of yellow and white, about equal parts of yellow and white, but I don't need a lot of paint on my brush. I'm going to have one kind of floating in through here. So I have my yellow and white and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the center and then I'm just going to spin it out. So that way it'll be a little bit brighter in the center and then it will um, almost look like we've got some some glow happening around the edges. And then you could certainly make it any brighter if you wanted to just let it dry and if you want to do a second coat feel free to do so and i'm going to do all of my glow dots like that in various sizes i want a smaller one down in through here because i'm going to have a little fairy on a swing back in through here so just a little bit of yellow and white i'm putting a touch more white on my brush to get this a little bit brighter in the center and you can have them in whatever intensity you want you just can be really bright with a lot of white or more subtle with more yellow. Whatever is your preference is fine by me. It's your fairy land. You can make it however you would like. I'm going to now do a big huge one in the kind of above here, maybe somewhere in through here. This one's going to be my largest fairy that I'm going to do. So I have again yellow and white on my brush. I'm going to have this one somewhere in this vicinity. And again, I start in the center and then I just go out in a natural circular motion. Wherever my hand takes me, that's where I let it take me. And then I just let myself kind of run out of paint around those edges. You could put a tiny bit of water on your brush if you want to um, make that paint sink in a little bit more into the um, crevices of the canvas. Sometimes when we just let our uh, paintbrush run out of paint, it almost looks like it's kind of skipping along the canvas texture. So if you want it to sink in more, you just want to have it a little bit more fluid, which means it's got to be wetter. You can do that with liquid medium or a little bit of water on your brush and it will sink into those uh, crevices in the canvas a little bit better. And you can bump right into this um, this hut top if, if yours isn't wet like mine was. And then I'm going to just sporadically put more all over the place. I'm going to do my yellow and white ones first. 
You can do as many as you want. These three are going to be where I'm actually going to have the um, the fairy that you'll be able to see her body and stuff. These other ones I'm going to do are just going to imply that there's fairies floating all around my canvas. And again, we're going to put little sparkle dots in them later. This is just going to be our, our base coat for them. You can put them in between the trees. You can have them in between branches. You can have them crossing over branches. You can have little tiny ones. You can have big ones, whatever works for you. Again, I'm trying not to do too much in the, in the center region. Um, so we can have kind of a focal point, but if you wanted to do more, you certainly could. And that's a lot of, uh, are enough yellow ones. So now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna do a couple of light green ones, which is gonna be with my um, mint color plus white. So my light green plus white on my brush. And now I can do these, these other colored, Ooh, I need a little bit more of the green on there so we can actually see it. And again, you can make yours any color that you want. You could have multicolored ones if you want. You could have, you know, use more vibrant of the tones if you wanna do with your green oxide or with your dark purple violet, whatever works. It's, you know, again, it's your, it's your fantasy fairy tale type of painting. You can make it into whatever you want. I'm gonna do a couple of these green ones um, with the white in them over in through here. You'll of course see the green ones better if you put them on top of the purple um, as opposed to on top of the green. So that's gonna be your call. That's some good green ones. Now I'm gonna put some purple ones in or some light purple ones. So I'm going for my lavender plus white on my brush. So I have about equal parts of the lavender and white. And again, put it wherever you want. If you want some good ones up in the top, put some good ones up in the top. If you want them to be lighter or darker, again, you could use your, um, your the purple violet without the white in it. That's gonna give you some darker um, colors for it. Again, it, everything's up to you. And then once you've got this done, we're gonna be using our, we're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our little fairy houses, or our house huts. <laughs> I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm gonna use are, let's see, I'm gonna use brown, black, white, yellow, and burnt sienna. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding a little doorway with a light on the inside. I'll be adding a little bit of a highlight and a shadow on the base to the house itself. And then we'll add a little bit of color into the rooftop. I'm gonna start with white paint on my brush and I'm gonna start by making just my openings or my, my doors to my, little, to my little houses. I'm gonna just do a, um, like a crescent type of a shape. You could really make your little houses into whatever you want. We're gonna be putting a lot of greenery at the bottom or on this branch, so don't worry what happens when you hit the um, the branch itself because we'll be, we'll be hiding that. I'm gonna do the same thing for all of them with a little bit of white. Just gonna give myself a little arcing doorway uh, this little tiny one up here, if you can get it, great. If not, no worries. <laughs> Just a little tiny mark in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to do a little shadow and a highlight on this area in through here. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black and brown, and I'm going to put a little bit of this underneath this little rooftop in through here. So a little bit of black and brown, and then I can even just pull a little bit down the side in order to just give it a little bit of dimension. I'm gonna pick up now burnt sienna and brown just to get that to blend in a little bit. I'm not going inside the door, I'm just outside the door now <laughs> on the exterior of the, of the house. And as you're going through this, just know that this could be a piece of wood, it could be whatever you want it to, to be. Um, if you want it to be a nice smooth thing, then just make it nice and without bumps and stuff on it. I just picked up a tiny bit of white to give myself just a little bit of a highlight over here on this right side of the house, something like that. So that's just the little shadow and highlight I'm gonna to add to that. I'm gonna 
wash my brush, I'm gonna start back over with a little bit of brown and black, put a tiny bit of a shadow right underneath that rooftop, so that gives it some good dimension, bring that shadow down a little bit. Actually, this one I think the shadow should go down the right-hand side of the house. I'm picturing the light source is our fairies in the middle, so I'm putting the shadow down the right side of the house, and then I wipe my brush off, pick up a little bit of burnt sienna and brown, or just burnt sienna to blend it in, and then I'll pick up a little bit of white on my dirty brush in order to give myself just a tiny bit of a highlight over on the side where I feel that the um, light source is, which is this little left side in through here. I'm gonna, the other little house over here, I don't really need to do much, just picking up a tiny bit of black, kind of giving myself a little underline and then just a little shadow, that, that's fine for me. They, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush now and I'm gonna put a little color on the roofs. So I'm gonna pick up some burnt sienna and I'm just gonna use this as a kind of a thatching type of a color. Burnt sienna is gonna start the process just in this little kind of indent area. Now I'm picking up yellow and white to finish it out. So. I started with burnt sienna and then little yellow and white is gonna give me my kind of my fun highlight pieces and colors to this little bit of a thatching type of a roof. Again, you could have yours anything you want. I just wanted something that looked like it had some good texture to it and would work well in my forest setting. So start with burnt sienna, give myself a little bit of this fun curved markings in kind of the center of that roof. Now wipe my brush off, pick up yellow and white at the same time on my brush just to kind of intermingle these uh, straw or hay type of colors in through here. And of course you can make yours brighter or darker. And then this little guy up here, same thing, just a teeny tiny bit in that little center, add a touch of yellow and white. So I like to just kind of repeat the process on on you know similar elements. Now I just need to do the little lights in the in the houses. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to start with a tiny bit of yellow on my brush to give myself a little bit of a glow coming out this um, doorway. I'm going to have mine kind of shooting out to the right. Then I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow and white and just get myself a little brightness coming out of this of the um, house. So I'm just kind of making these little, pulling out these little beams of light coming out of my, of my house. You could of course have yours any way you want. So I'll repeat that step for the next one. So a little bit of yellow. And again, when you get to these smaller ones, just the essence of the, um, of a light in there is cute enough. So, and yellow started and then just little beams of little yellow and white being kind of casting a bright shadow or a bright light out of that little hut and then just a little white to kind of make it glow a little brighter and then this one I don't need to do much and then you can certainly fiddle with it all you want and once you've got that done we are going to be using our large brush for the next step so you can put this small brush away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint all of our foliage. So this is gonna include all the leaves in the trees, the upper trees, and then the little, we'll call it fairy, fairy grass leaves <laughs> on these branches where the little huts are. I'm gonna be using my large brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are green, black, yellow, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some really dark leaves on first and then I'll build my way to the lighter leaves. I'm gonna start with green and a little bit of black on my brush. So I have more green than black. This is gonna provide me as I'm dotting, it's gonna provide me with a nice dark forest green type of a color. I'm going to start at the top because I know that the exterior is where I really want to have the darkest type of look or appearance to it. I'm dotting this, which means I'm using a stippling brush stroke. I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm just kind of dotting it into the canvas. And this is allowing me to get this nice textural type of appearance that'll make it look like, like leaves. I'm going to, as I'm coming in towards like the the um, center of the canvas, I'm gonna get a little bit more um, of a 
visual effect where I'm not just smashing it in, but you can pull down little pieces that'll make it look like you've got it almost kind of drooping down at the tips of these branches. You can certainly have your formation of leaves however you want. If you want to have way more than me, put way more than me. If you want to have less than I have, put less than I have. But I am concentrating for mine on getting it pretty heavy up at the top of my canvas. And then I will um, allow for my fairies to take over and let them be the focal point down in the middle of my canvas. So I didn't want the, the um, leaves to take over the um, take over the show. So I just want to make sure that I've got kind of a good balance of everything on the painting. Now that I've got the ones up at the top started, I'm going to put a little bit uh, down here. So again, green plus a tiny bit of black. I'm going to just kind of tap this in at the bottom of my house and then maybe give it a little bit around however much I want. If I want this this one to have a good yard, <laughs> I put a, I'll put a lot of a lot of greenery. I'll put some coming up over in through here. I'm just using the tip of my brush at this point. I do want to be able to see this, so I want to you know kind of allow it to take up a good amount of space. I'm going to have some of this kind of falling over the edge of her. Her, yeah, I guess this. The, the fairies I'm depicting are little female fairies, so I'm having it kind of falling over here. I am going to have one swinging down here, so I don't want to take up too much of the, um, of the space where this glow dot is, but I definitely want to have some nice kind of greenery coming down in through here. Maybe just a little bit up and through there. And you can use this greenery to hide things too, so if you had a branch that wasn't appealing to you, just put some some fairy grass on it. <laughs> I just reloaded with a little bit of green and black. And if this brush is, is splaying out on you, what you can do, I like to do this a lot, is just kind of squish it on the side of my palette. And what that does is it brings my bristles together and it allows me to make these smaller marks. Even though I'm using such a big brush, it allows me to just use the corner of my brush and gets these little tiny marks coming down. You could always switch brushes and use your um, medium or your smaller brush on these smaller areas. That's going to be, again, a personal decision that you make all on your own. But this, I think, is looking pretty good. I'm going to just bring a little bit more down in through here. And then I just have this little tiny guy up here. I don't know how I'm going to get this one with my brush, but we're just going to put a couple of little dots. Hey, I got it. There we go. <laughs> so now that I did that, I just need to put a little bit of lightness. So that's where my yellow and my um, green are going to come into play. I'm not going to wash my brush, but I'm going to pick up yellow and a touch of white. I don't know if I said it, I was using white, but I am. So I picked up yellow and a touch of white. And again, just a really tiny bit on my brush. And I'm going to start to just give myself little bits of highlights in these leaves. I don't need to do much. I don't even need to do, you know, again, hardly anything, especially since the star of my show is going to be my fairy. So this kind of detail, it, it's, it's not needed to be really invasive. Just less is more sometimes. So I just want to give the illusion that maybe some of these leaves are being illuminated by our the glow of our fairies. So I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot. And again, just going to do the same thing with these guys down here. And because I am working wet on wet, the paint underneath is still wet. I don't want to push it too hard. I'm really just kind of gently tapping on this light stuff on the top. If I was to sit here and push it really hard and dot it a thousand times, it's going to mush all together and look like one solid color. So if you're doing this and that happens to you, just back off for a minute, let it dry a little bit, and then you can come back in on top of it and add these little bits of highlights. Sometimes, again, when we're working fast like this or just trying to layer on you know detail after detail it can get away from us so just you know if that happens just back off of it for a minute and come back and you can add those those pretty details on top of it and then once you've got this done we're going to use our small brush for the next step so you can just put this large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the base coat for the fairies I'm going to use my small brush and I'm going to be using black paint. 
you could certainly draw this out with a pencil or a piece of chalk or something along that line. I just know that this is going to be very tiny, tiny little fairies that I'm doing. So for me, sometimes just starting with a stick figure with paint and building off of that works out really well. So that's what I'm going to do today. <laughs> so I'm going to be using my small brush. I will be using black paint, but I will always be using a watered down version. So what I'm doing right now is just adding a couple of drops of water to it. So it's very fluid, almost like an ink consistency. See how thin I've got it going here. And then that's going to allow me to get nice and um, tiny lines as I go through this process. So I've got it watered down just a little bit so it'll be nice and smooth. I'm going to start with this fairy in through here. I'm going to have them in three different sizes. This is going to be my small one, my medium one, and my large one. So I'm going to start with my medium one first. She's going to be just kind of floating towards her, her little village here, her fairy village. I'm going to start by doing a um, vertical kind of curved line to give me just the base to my stick figure. <laughs> so I'm going to start somewhere up in this vicinity and I'm going to give myself kind of a little line that goes pretty straight in through here and then I'm going to just kind of curve it just a little bit like this. So that's going to be my base to my stick figure. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build off of that. So I'm going to call her waist right about here. So this is a little bit less than half the distance of my whole line. If this is about half the distance, I'm a little bit above that. So we'll call that her waist. I'm going to give her a little head in this area in through here. So just a little little head like this. I don't need to do any fine tuned detail. This is just going to be kind of in the silhouette. You could even put like a little bun on the top of her head if you wanted to, but again, not necessary. We've got a lot of um, her wings and stuff to go. I'm going to put her torso on. So this is going to be, she's got a little neck in through here. I'm going to put a torso right in through here. So just kind of like a um, rectangle type of shape in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her arms on. I'm going to have her arms just kind of um, down and kicked out a little bit. So if this is her waist in through here, that's about how long her elbow would be. So something like that is where her elbow would be. And then I'm just going to kind of kick out a little forearm and a little hand off of that. So just something cute like that. I'm going to I'm going to put one on the other side as well, but the other side is probably going to be hidden by um by her wing, but doesn't hurt to have it there just in case. So just bring down a little kind of out like that. And of course you can make it into whatever you'd like. Something like that will, will work for me. And what that was just a little bit wide on her hand, but again, I can hide that with a strategically placed wing. <laughs> so I'm going back in for a little bit of black. I'm gonna put her skirt on, which is gonna come about halfway between here and the bottom. So I'm just going to give her this fun little skirt from her waist. It's going to kick out a little bit like this. And then just I'm going to give a little bumpy, uh, little frayed edge down at the bottom. So I'm going to hide her, her middle stick <laughs> in through there like that. And now this just becomes one of her legs. And I'm going to put um, her uh, little calf muscle on here. She's got a little foot like that. And then if I felt that I could get away with a, another little um, leg kicking out, maybe we have another one like this and then this maybe kicks this way. So we got a little foot in through there. Maybe her knee is like that. That looks cute. And then what I'm going to do is uh, maybe just bring her skirt down just a little bit more over that calf because that calf wasn't excellent. So we'll just, we'll just cover it up with a little skirt. Now I'm going to put her wings on. So I'm going in for more of my watered down black, but I'm, I've got more water on my brush and I'm just going to give her some, uh, the profile of her wings going to kind of come up over her head and just kind of give this, it's going to meet the middle of her back. And I have lots of water on my brush right now. So my, my wings are a little transparent, which is exactly how I want. And then I'm going to do one down, uh, this backside into here. And I think her arm is going to get hidden. That was a, useless pain, <laughs> but I didn't know if I was going to cover it up. So might as well have that hand there just in case. There we go. That looks good. So now I'm going to move on to my small 
um, fairy over here. She's going to be on a swing, so I'm going to put my swing in place first. I'm going to have it coming off my tree like this, in through uh, here, maybe just a little bit farther. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm going to have another, the other side of the swing like this. I'm going to have the seat of the swing like this and then I just need to put her body on. <laughs> so we're gonna have her torso kind of coming like this, meeting the seat, which would make sense. So we've got, this is gonna represent her torso. We're gonna have her legs kind of coming out and just kind of kicking and having fun. She's really enjoying her, her, her swing ride, maybe bringing this one down like this with a little foot coming off. And again, these are super tiny details, so you don't have to make it perfect. And if you make it where it's too long or too big or something, you can always hide it, uh, come back with some of like your background color and clean up any lines. So if this is her torso right here, I'm gonna just put a circle for her head, even though again, I'm gonna be hiding it with wings and stuff like that, something like that. And then I just need some arms that are gonna connect to the swing, so her the arm closest to us, which is her right arm, is going to connect to uh, this side of the swing, and then we'll put her other arm is going to connect to the other side. Well, that's going to make a really long arm, so let's we got to beef up her torso because that's that's a little bit too long for me. There we go. That looks that looks a little bit better, something like that. And you can you know if you've got to if you got to make them bigger to make it look like it makes more sense, go for it. And again, you can hide things with fairy dust and all that kind of good stuff. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to give her some wings off the back. So again, I've got, um, this is her back in through here. I'm going to have a fun wing coming off of here. And then maybe a little one coming off of here. And then I'm also going to have one on the other side of her head. So something like this. And again, I've got a lot of moisture on my brush in order to get these skinny lines in place. That looks pretty good. I think I need to actually make her legs longer because that arm should not be as long as her legs. So let me just make her legs a little bit longer in through here so, so it feeds or satisfies my painterly eye. There we go. That looks better. And again, you can always make things bigger. It's easier to make them bigger than it is to make them smaller. So if you, you know, end up with an, uh, with an extra long arm and you can't shorten it, just make other things a little bit bigger to make it look a little bit more proportionate. That looks good. Now I'm going to go on to my bigger, my biggest of them all fairies. This is going to indicate that she's the closest to us. So she's going to be in through here. I'm going to make a diagonal line that's maybe about two and a half to three inches long. I'm going to start in through here and bring it kind of in through here. I'm going to curve it just a little bit. Something like that will work for me. And I'm going to, get it, I'm going to do it similar to how I did here, which is kind of tell myself where I want the waist. So if this is about halfway in my line, I'm going to come a little bit above that. So that's going to indicate my waist. I'm going to put a little head on her in through here. So she's just kind of flying that way. <laughs> she's going to be having some dust coming out of her hands in a minute, but I'm going to start in uh, this vicinity with her head like this. And maybe we've got a little bun on the top of her head. I, a lot of my fairies end up with buns on the top of their head. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why, but I like to paint them with buns on the top of their head. <laughs> so we're seeing her at a side profile angle kind of thing. So I'm gonna just give her, this is gonna be her back in through here, meeting up by her um, neck. I need to bring her neck out a little bit. So something like that's gonna be her belly area down right by her waist in through here. And then I just need to give her her arms. So again, I, based on what I explained on the last one, her elbow to her arm shouldn't be longer than where her waist is. So however that long is, you can kind of kick it out a little bit to the side like that. I'm gonna give her an arm coming down like this, and then she's gonna be holding out her forearm and she's going to be kind of having some dust coming out so we're going to do this with a little maybe hand like that and if you feel that you would see part of the other arm that would come out from you know her other shoulder you could certainly give the essence 
of the other forearm coming towards here um, and maybe another little hand if, if you feel that that would um, make sense on yours go for that now I've got her her rear end is in through here so that's gonna represent her rear end and then I've got her her thigh is gonna come after her rear end her knee would be somewhere about here then we've got a little calf muscle in through there and then I've got her foot that I gotta put on in through here so I just reloaded my brush little heel to her foot and there's her foot so we just created her oops her butt keeps growing on me her butt into her thigh knee calf and I'm gonna color in that so now I'm gonna put on her other leg I'm gonna have her other leg just kind of um, coming out from her hip and through here this is gonna uh, I need her knee to be somewhere in we'll call it this vicinity so you can stick figure it by just doing this and this to her other I'm gonna have her other foot touching her knee one foot touches the other knee like that so I need her thigh to her knee I need her calf like that and then her little foot and her pointy toe is gonna meet her other knee like that now I can put her clothing on and her wings so she's gonna have a little skirt so I'm gonna have her skirt is gonna come out from her waist and it's gonna look kind of like it's flying this way and if you if your legs didn't come out exactly as you want just build a really long skirt that can cover the majority of them so again I just put water on my brush in order to get this to to happen I'm gonna have my skirt kind of coming out in through here maybe reaching towards her knee region and my skirt's gonna looks like it's gonna cover my knee which I'm okay with that and if your skirt is transparent you would see some of the um, body underneath it which works just great so that looks good I'm gonna put some wings on now so again watered down uh, black paint I'm gonna have this I'm gonna have these wings really kind of carefree and flowing so I'm gonna start on her back in through here bring this up over her head and maybe up in this vicinity I'm gonna bring this back down to her back and I'm gonna do the same thing with another one coming out and through here and kind of just going like like the wind is taking it as she's as she's flying through the sky something like this and I want to keep them transparent so I can see that light behind them so again just watered down black allowing me to get these nice wispy kind of strokes through the center of the wing I'm gonna do a, a second wing behind this one so just kind of bring this maybe out like this and of course you could have colorful wings if you wanted to if something goes awry during this process you can certainly put color in your wings and then we're gonna we have uh, another step that we're gonna be doing with this small brush so make any little adjustments that you need to on your fairies then you, and then you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to finish our fairies and we're gonna finish our glow dots so I guess we could call that fairy dust too <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be adding uh, I'm gonna use my small brush I'm gonna be using uh, black and burnt sienna to finish my fairies and then I'll be using white and probably yellow white and yellow for my glow dots and my fairy dust but if I decide or want to incorporate any of those other lighter colors in my fairy dust I will and I'll let you know what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna finish my fairies and how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna be using mostly burnt sienna to just add kind of a glow of sorts or a highlight onto the clothing and the and the wings but there may be spots because I used a watered down black paint for the last step there may be spots where I need to enhance that black a little bit more to make sure that it's not uh, too transparent and in those cases I will use um, some additional black so I'm going to start with burnt sienna and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself uh, just a little bit of a quick brush stroke on the side of my 
fairies that I feel would be illuminated. So if she's coming out from the dark and going towards the light, she would probably have a little bit, oh, that just made her whole head big. <laughs> she would probably have a little bit maybe on the left, maybe a little bit down the sides of her feet. And you could even, you know, because the wings are so transparent, just put a little bit in through there. I'm not doing much. I'm really just adding a touch of color to my, um, to my fairies so they're not just black. I'm going in for this one over here. I'm also going to be adding a little bit of this burnt sienna on the swing rope or string in through here. And I think this is one of those areas I want to add a little bit more black. So I just picked up a touch more black just to make sure that um, my string looks supportive enough and isn't too transparent. So it will hold my fairy. Well, not that my fairy even needs to be held up in the air because she can fly all on her own, but <laughs> I'm just adding a little bit more black to make sure that this has the, the um, so it's not see-through. And I also am noticing that she doesn't have a skirt on. So I'm gonna put a little, a little extra um, bit down in through here to make it look like she's got a skirt on. Now I'm gonna pick up my burnt sienna and I'm gonna add just a teeny tiny bit on maybe her legs, maybe the skirt in through here and a touch on her, maybe her face and a little bit on her wings. So again, hardly anything. Again, you don't need to do much at all. I'm gonna move up to my fairy up here and she's gonna get some on her, a little bit on her arms, a little bit on her face. Again, just I'm adding just this smudge of the burnt sienna just to give myself a little bit of a fun color in here without overwhelming it and making it too vibrant. I want this to really kind of look like it's enchanted and having some nice, um, nice rustic colors that are complementary to the forest that they are, that they are floating in. <laughs> Maybe a tiny bit on her leg in through here. And if you ever do too much, you can just bring back some of the black or bring back any other colors that you want. So that's looking pretty good for, for my um, fairies. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to work on my fairy dots and dust. So I'm putting yellow and white about equal parts on my brush. I'm going to have some fairy dust coming out from her little hands in through here. So I'm just doing teeny tiny polka dots in through here. And these are gonna kind of travel in a bigger sense down towards this house in through here. So as I get closer to the house, I'm just kind of pushing a little bit harder with my brush like this. And you can have these fairy dust kind of marks really saying anything you want. You can have them traveling all over the painting. You can have them illuminating one of the huts. I'm making, again, these a little bit bigger as they're kind of coming closer to the hut in through here. I'm gonna also, um, I just picked up just white paint to make some little tiny, even more sparkly kind of dots in through here, just little teeny tiny ones as they're near my um, fairy. And then again, just kind of getting them to go a little bit bigger as they're coming towards this house. And I'll also use this in the centers of these guys. That'll make them glow a little bit more. So I've got white on my brush. I put a dot in the center and then just kind of, oh, that was a little bit much. And then I just kind of pull it around in a circle. So anywhere that you want to brighten up, you can put little tiny white dots, spark, like spin it around. You can even, like right now, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my, um, light green. If I wanted tiny little sparkle dots that weren't white, I could just use one of my other light colors. So if I wanted a lot of little sparkle dots around here, but didn't necessarily want them to be white, I could use my lighter color on top of this purple and that would work just fine. So you could use any combination of white, light purple, light green, yellow to create these dots. Like in through here, I just picked up a little bit more white. I want it to kind of look like she's Got some kind of trail of sparkle dots coming away from her. So that was white. Now I'm picking up a little bit of yellow so it's not too much as it gets into this, um, this tree area. And again, I'm picking up now my light purple and light green. Again, just so it doesn't get too much, but you can still have some fun with that. And then 
Again, any of those colors would work right now. I just picked up a bit more white on my dirty brush. Gonna add some additional little tiny sparkle dots in through here. The little sparkle dots are gonna give the illusion that there's maybe some fairies all over the place. So you can really have fun with creating this brightness in whatever intensity that you want. So you can have little tiny ones all throughout the, the scenery. I'm Again, I keep kind of picking up the white in order to enhance the little centers of some of these glow dots. So have fun with it. Again, make it into whatever you'd like it to be. Keep exploring what uh, variation of the colors that you want to do. And then once you're done, we have one little step left to go and it's going to be with this small brush. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going bottom left on this one. I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna use Rust or Burnt Sienna. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or however you wanna sign your paintings is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign them however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very lovely fantasy enchanted forest and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.